Welcome to Disneyland. Let's eat some vegan food. These are all the options to the best of my knowledge as of January 2019. While I strive to be as accurate and up-to-date as possible, Disneyland food does change regularly, so the information becomes out of date at some point. Please follow me on Instagram at happiestveganoner and see my blog, link in the description, for the most recent information. Let's start with breakfast at Carnation Cafe. Ask your server for the vegan Mickey waffles and vegan pancakes. It is the allergy version, so they are also gluten-free. Then, they can also make you roasted potatoes and soy lattes, or bring you soy milk to go with your coffee. For lunch and dinner, they have the Chef's Vegan Burger, which is a house-made veggie patty, tomatoes, lettuce, pickled red onions, and a vegan chipotle mayo on a weed roll, served with either fries or fruit. The fries are in a shared fryer, so choose the fruit if you prefer. As of January 2019, there is a vegan sloppy joe on the specials menu. It is very delicious, and I highly recommend it if you are at Carnation Cafe in the near future. According to the menu description, the filling is slow-cooked lentils, button mushrooms, and carrots, dressed in a sweet and spicy chipotle barbecue sauce. It is topped with a rainbow pickled veggie mix and served on a crusty multigrain ciabatta bun with a side of seasoned house-made potato chips. Plaza Inn has similar vegan options for breakfast as Carnation Cafe, but the experience is quite different because it's a character buffet. So the characters wander around while you eat and you can take photos with them. The vegan waffles aren't on the buffet, so you just ask your server and they will have the chef make you a batch of them. There are also some fruit toppings at the buffet, like this strawberry topping. The hash browns on the buffet are already vegan. For lunch and dinner, there is this pasta with marinara sauce. Omit the cheese. Cast members were unsure about the breadstick ingredients the day I went, so they offered me applesauce or carrots instead. It wouldn't be my first choice, but if the rest of your party really wants to eat here, you can certainly get a filling meal. At Jolly Holiday, you can get the grilled veggie and whole grain salad. Described on the menu as seasonal vegetables, mixed greens, barley, spelt, with basil vinaigrette, and served with a fresh breadstick. Make sure to ask for no breadstick because it has cheese baked onto it. They can substitute their house-made chips. The chef told me that the veggies are cooked in oil, but they can't guarantee 100% that there isn't cross-contamination within the kitchen. The dressing is vegan, so no need to substitute that. They also have soy and almond milk that they can make lattes with. Halfway down Main Street is a Starbucks, otherwise known as the Market House, that has all of the vegan options you would normally find at a Starbucks. Most of the drinks can be veganized by ordering with soy, almond, or coconut milk. Google ordering vegan at Starbucks and you'll find some comprehensive and up-to-date lists. At the Tropical Hideaway, you can get Dole Whips in three flavors, pineapple, orange, and raspberry. All flavors of Dole Whip are vegan, and you can read the ingredients list on Dole's website. You can also get a swirl of any of these three flavors. You can also get a Dole Whip float, which is pineapple juice with any flavor of Dole Whip or a swirl of two flavors. Or you can get a loaded whip, which is any flavor of Dole Whip or swirl topped with toasted coconut, crystallized hibiscus, pineapple pieces, tangerine, and jackfruit. Omit the pocky cookie sticks to make it vegan. They also have this ramen noodle salad, which is sometimes vegan, sometimes not. Sometimes they'll use egg noodles. It has switched back and forth within the first few days of opening, so make sure to read the ingredients list and look especially for eggs. They also have hip peas in two flavors, vegan white cheddar and sriracha sunshine. They have plantain chips, trail mix, salt and vinegar Lay's chips, whole fruits like apples, bananas, oranges, pineapple spears, etc. They have blue sky sodas, and coconut water and orange juice, etc. The chefs did show me the binder with the ingredients list of the veggie bao buns. Unfortunately, the dough does contain milk. At the Tiki Juice Bar, you can get pineapple dough whip, just the soft serve, or a dough float with pineapple juice, or also a pineapple spear. If you're into spicy, ask for a packet of tahine and the cast member will be happy to give you one. At the Bingo Barbecue, they make veggie skewers, but they are on a shared grill. Normally, I'm not too concerned about shared kitchens, but in this case, since it's in the open and I can actually see it happening, it sort of makes me lose my appetite. But by all means, get them if it doesn't bother you. I do like to get this jungle julep here. It's a slush of grape, orange, lemon, and pineapple juice with grenadine. It's very refreshing. Bengal Barbecue also makes a hummus plate, but it's pre-made and one of them has cheese in it. It's the same one you'll see at the Tropical Imports next door. At Tropical Imports, you'll also see these overnight oats. They're made with almond milk. Go to my blog to see a full ingredients list. One of the ingredients is actually Dole Whip. They put these out in the morning and they usually sell out sometime in the afternoon. At Rancho del Socolo, the tacos, burritos, and tostada salad can be modified to be vegan. Just ask for no meat or dairy. 
My favorite is the tostada salad. It doesn't look like much, but on the bottom there's a huge layer of refried beans and it's very filling. I usually can't even finish it all. The crunchy shell is just heavenly. Ask for extra guacamole and grilled veggies. They've always been happy to do that for me when I say no cheese and no meat. They recently added these cauliflower tacos with avocado crema. The chef showed me the ingredients list for the marinade they use for the cauliflower. It's vegan, you can see it on my website. He also said that he knew the recipe for the avocado crema by heart, avocados, pasilla peppers, and tofu, and he assured me that there were no eggs or dairy in it. But lately the chefs have been saying conflicting things about this, so please double check about the avocado sauce when you order. The chips are vegan as well, the cinnamon and limon flavors. And they also have these fruit cups, which are very refreshing. At the Hungry Bear, they recently added the Beyond Burger, which is very exciting. It's called Messy Melvin's Vegan Burger, which is a reference to country bears. And it's a Beyond Patty, Sloppy Joe style with stewed vegetables on top. The chef verified with me that the bun is free of dairy, eggs, and honey. It comes with a side of either vegan coleslaw or fries, which the cast member told me are in a dedicated fryer. They also have this watermelon lemonade freeze, which is very good. Just say no whipped cream to make it vegan. At the Royal Street Veranda, they have vegan gumbo. It says vegetarian gumbo on the menu board, but it's actually vegan. Except in cases where they brush the sourdough bread with butter. This is rare, but make sure to double check in case they are doing that on the day that you were there. For breakfast at the Riverbell Terrace, there isn't anything vegan on the regular menu. But on the secret menu, they have vegan pancakes, and they can serve it with fruit. For lunch and dinner, they make two dishes with the barbecue tofu. You can either get it as part of the River Bell's chopped salad or as an entree with two sides. The tofu is normally cooked in a shared fryer, but they are happy to bake it for you separately if you ask. The sides are steamed veggies or tater tots, which are in a shared fryer. I prefer the salad version. Ask for the chopped salad with tofu and then switch the ranch dressing for apple vinaigrette instead. It normally comes with fried onions, and they're in the shared fryer as well, but there's no egg batter or anything like that. So omit those if you would like to avoid shared fryers. At the French market, you can get the off-menu vegan jambalaya. It's not a huge portion, so if you're very hungry, I would suggest getting a fruit plate as well. Or another menu hack is that you can ask them to put it in a sourdough bread bowl like the gumbo, and that makes it much more filling. Right around the corner at the mint julep bar, you can get a virgin mint julep. I asked for the ingredients list to look for honey or any other hidden animal products, and it is in fact vegan. At Cafe Orleans, the vegan entree is the vegetable bolognese. The menu doesn't say anything about cheese, it just says zucchini, yellow squash, eggplant, and ratatouille sauce, but it's a good idea to say no cheese just in case, since this is the sort of dish I could see having random cheese on top of it. You can also modify the fancy french fries, pommes frites, omit the parmesan, switch the mayo-based remoulade sauce for ketchup, and you can modify the salade de maison, the house salad, and ask for the allergy version of this salad, which is with no cheese and no candied pecans, which contain dairy. There is nothing vegan on the menu currently at Blue Bayou, but the chef will make you a pasta dish if you ask. There is a vegetarian pasta dish with egg noodles and cheese on the menu, so this is with different noodles and some added veggies. It does taste great, but it's $30 and it doesn't really seem to match the price point. That is the case with everything on the menu though. Even meat eaters say that this restaurant isn't the best. You're there for ambiance, not for food. They do have a vegan dessert, which is quite nice. They have several sorbet flavors, and it depends on which day you're there. The day I went, they had mango, kiwi, and pear. So what you see is the pear. At the Red Rose Tavern, they have the Enchanted Crispy Samosa Sandwich, which is a handmade patty of roasted cauliflower, potatoes, and peas, with lettuce, tomato compote, and a vegan curry mayo. I had the chef double check on the onion roll bread that it comes on, and she said that it is free of dairy, eggs, and honey. To veganize the sandwich, omit the fried green beans, they are in an egg batter, and replace the pommes frites, which have cheese, with regular fries. Gaston's famous brew is also vegan, they use a non-dairy foam topping on it. There is one dish that can be veganized on the breakfast menu at Red Rose Tavern, the garden vegetable hash, which is described as mushrooms, sun-dried tomato, kale, tavern potatoes, lemon bechamel sauce, and baked eggs served with petit croissant. So you have to remove the sauce, egg, and croissant. I double checked that the potatoes and the veggies are indeed sautéed in oil and not butter. This dish is alright, but it's a little pricey for what you're getting after the modifications. I think they should add some tofu in there. At Maurice's Treats, which is also in Fantasyland, there are some frozen lemonade drinks that are vegan. The Boysen Apple Freeze, and my personal favorite, the Red Rose Lemonade Freeze, which is pictured here. At Red Rocket's Pizza Port slash Alien Pizza Planet, 
you can ask them to make you a personal pizza with vegan cheese, which is Daya, or to put vegan cheese on top of your pasta. The vegan cheese is not on the menu, it's a secret, so you have to ask for it. They make it to order, so it will take an extra 10 minutes or so, but it's worth it. Also, it comes on a gluten-free crust. The cast members have told me that the breadsticks and the marinara are also vegan. This photo is from California Adventure, but it's generally the same pizza as in Tomorrowland. The only difference is that they don't put the vegetables on top of the Pizza Planet version for some reason, citing cross-contamination reasons, but they will give you a plain Daya cheese pizza. You can also get the Terra Nova vegetable pasta. Ask for no parmesan and replace it with Daya cheese if desired. At Galactic Grill, they have a veggie wrap on the menu that seems promising, but the problem is that they are made off-site and the cheese is already in them, so they can't make any without the cheese. They do have veggie burgers on the secret menu though. It's a vegan garden burger patty. They showed me the ingredients list and I checked for eggs and dairy. And the regular vegan buns that they use throughout the park. The fries are in a dedicated, non-shared fryer. Throughout the parks you can find various vegan packaged snacks. Mostly in Pooh's Corner, the candy shop on Main Street, and the candy shop on Buena Vista Street. There are lollipops and various hard candies. You can see the full ingredients list of all of these on my blog. And dark chocolates, two of which are vegan the non-pareils, and the cocoa-dusted almonds. Chip and Dale have various vegan snacks, so you can pause the video to see ingredients lists or go to my blog where you can see photos of all of them. So here we see a roasted nut mix, very appropriate for Chip and Dale, and some veggie chips, which are vegan as well. And here we have some Chip and Dale pretzels as well. This one is a Mountain Mambo seed and fruit mix, and that one is actually clearly labeled vegan at the bottom of the front of packaging there. The Disneyland popcorn is vegan too. It's with canola oil and coconut oil instead of butter. And you can see a photo of the ingredients list on my blog. Here's a hack for you. I like to bring a little Tupperware of nutritional yeast with me and I put it on top of my popcorn and I leave a little trail of yellow pixie dust behind me. People often ask me about the churros. They unfortunately are not vegan. They have both milk and eggs in them. Next time you have a moment, you could write an email to Disneyland as I often do and ask them to veganize a certain thing, for example, the churros, or you can stop at City Hall or Chamber of Commerce in California Adventure and leave them a little comment to let them know you'd like more vegan options. At the ice cream carts, you can get the Olaf Strawberry Lemonade Bar and also a Strawberry Fruit Bar. And then they also have Sour Patch Kids and Red Vines and various vegan candies. Also, they have these Minute Maid Frozen Lemonades in a couple of flavors. And of course, some cotton candy as well. And the Mickey pretzels are vegan as well. No eggs, no dairy. They do contain palm oil though, if that's something you avoid. And you can see the ingredients list for that on my blog. So get them without the cheese and just get some mustard instead. And to finish it off, we'll have a look at what's available at the snack carts and see what's vegan here. So we have some juices, we have the pickles. So there's usually a couple different flavors. Sour and garlic, for example. They have the ingredients list right on the sign right there. Over here we have some watermelon, some mango slices with tahini, that's that chili spice, and then we have some hummus, the sabra hummus is vegan as well. The apples with caramel dipping sauce does have dairy in the dipping sauce. And then we've got some veggies with ranch, the ranch obviously has dairy, and then a box that has cheese in it, but we've got a pineapple spear and some grapes over here. Over here we have more pickles, so it looks like these are mostly the spicy ones. And then we've got some bananas, some apples, some cuties, and then some more pineapple spears, and some more grapes. And then we have some chips, those plain Lay's are vegan. And then we have these Stacy's pita chips over here, which are vegan as well. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who you think would also find it useful. After this video, I'll be uploading a similar video, but for the vegan options at Downtown Disney and for the ones at California Adventure, so subscribe so you don't miss those videos. As our friend Mickey says, see you real soon.